don't we jump ahead to the tweet yeah, from Justin Trudeau? Um, you know, the the head honcho himself. Please. I don't know if he's gone to Tofino Beach to surf on this uh, somber day, but uh, there it is. I'm not sure if you can read it on your side, but yes, it, I can. it does say that um, uh, the terror uh, on October 7, 2023, the terrorist organization Hamas launched a horrifying attack against Israel. We stand with Jewish people and Israelis on this painful anniversary. We won't relent until we see every last hostage returned home safely. End quote. Yeah, we stand no, with no, them. No. What's the next line? Oh. What's the next line there? To the Jewish people and Israelis in Canada. We stand with you on this painful anniversary. We, okay. One sentence, then the other. And this, the second sentence undoes the first sentence. We won't relent until we see every last hostage returned home safely. Oh, okay, well, that sounds good. We will keep working relentlessly with our allies until there is a ceasefire in the Middle East. So you want a ceasefire? The hostages aren't home. Exactly. And, and Sheila, we stand with Israel except when we're not standing with Israel. And what I mean by that, the Trudeau liberals has said that if you're going to go into Iran with a strike, uh, the nuclear bases, most of them underground, that's um, that's offside. The oil refineries, that's offside. Really? Um, what do you want the IDF to bomb? The botanical gardens? I mean, this is outrageous. And by the way, that reflects... The Biden administration's view, no, 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 don't go after uh, the nuclear plants, probably because the Biden administration allowed that to thrive again when they decided not to enforce the Trump administration's sanctions. And, um, well, we'll talk about the oil refineries, uh, the oil collectives, uh, you know, maybe we'll uh, give uh, approval to that. Sheila, this is crazy. How do you expect a nation in the very fight for survival to win that fight if it has to constantly fight with one hand tied behind its back. Well, and I, let's push ahead to uh, Pierre Polyev's statement because Pierre Polyev's statement does not mince words. Justin Trudeau doesn't even mention really truly the atrocities um, that the terror apologists are marching in favor of on the streets of Canada's major municipalities. But Pierre Polyev lays it all down um, and it shows you how uh, this is this is a moral battle that the liberals refuse to fight or even uh, make exception for. So he says, one year ago today, the genocidal and sadistic terrorists carried out the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. They burned people alive, tortured children in front of their parents, mutilated dead civilians, and posted these demonic cruelties online for the world to see. Demonic. Nice. I love to see a politician use that word. All the while, their cowardly bosses and benefactors watched from Tehran and other faraway safe havens. 101 hostages are still being held. Let them go. Meanwhile, Jews in Canada face grotesque anti-Semitism in the streets and by the two-faced and weak leadership of their prime minister placating lawless mobs. And yet, Israel and the Jewish people live on and fight on. Western democratic values depend on destroying Tehran's proxy armies of Hamas and Hezbollah. Canada's conservatives have not and will not waver. We won't bow down to the radical, woke, anti-Zionist Jew haters because never again is now, tomorrow and every day after. We unapologetically stand with Israel through fire and water and unite with Jews to say, I am Israel, hi. Uh, and then he put it in... Uh, in uh, French. So uh, far, far, far stronger than the liberals. Oh, that's isn't that sure. so refreshing uh, to see a politician saying what he means and mean what he says? You know, Sheila, I can't wait, though, to see uh, how Omar over at CTV News is going to report on this. I mean, I don't know if they'll go so far as uh, inserting phrases into a uh, a news report uh, made by the le the leader of the opposition, which he did not make. But, you know, who knows? It is CTV News, after all. Oh, let's go on to Yara Sachs. Uh, she, she, someone should do uh, check in on her today, and probably Anthony House father. Uh, oh we're going to need a hostage proof of life video from those two, taken uh, hostage by the Liberal Party of Canada. So Yara Sachs, you might remember her from such uh, comical abominations as uh, Hong Kong is Heil Hitler. <laughs> 
and um, her getting to second base with the guy who pays terrorists <laughs> to kill Jews. Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian leader. Uh, she's clutching his hand um, in this weird thruple first date experience with her and Melanie Jolie. She today <laughs> says, on October 7th, my heart breaks for the families. Those waiting for loved ones to come home still held hostage in Gaza one year on. Notice how she doesn't name who's responsible. Well, she doesn't want to offend her boyfriend, Sheila. I guess. Those struggling from such horrific loss and may never recover. Uh, whole families and communities were shattered that day. Today is about them. Again, why don't you say what happened? That so, rape victims were paraded in the streets. The broken bodies of murdered women were posted for the world to see. Families incinerated. Uh, children butchered in their beds. Or worse. Uh, po like the terror, not worse, but the mothers were killed. And then the terrorists were posing with the abducted babies. Why, why not mention any of that? Instead, she just tweets out this very um, staged photo. Well, Sheila, if uh, I'm the kind of guy, you know, deeds speak, actions are louder than words. If this is a heartfelt tweet by sex, you know, that her heart breaks, then why in blue hell earlier this year did you go over to the <coughs> Middle East to get chummy with the pay for slay terrorist Mahmoud Abbas? There's the photo evidence herself, especially... Sheila, you, she cannot make the argument, I was duty-bound, because she's not the prime minister. She is not the foreign affairs minister. She's she a just wanted a free trip to the Middle East. No, it's not that she wanted a free trip. She was pimping out her Judaism to, run, to make this uh, palatable. That's what she was doing. What a train she, wreck. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's no reason why the associate backbench minister of mental health is over there talking to Mahmoud Abbas, yeah. except insofar as she probably said, I'll go because Anthony Housefather said, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. And so she said, I'll go. I'll be the Jew that makes this meeting legitimate. Unbelievable. Ho ho, ship ahoy, rebels. I have some fantastic news. Rebel News is setting sail on the high seas next summer and you're invited. That's right, shipmates. We have booked passage on Holland America's mighty MS Zandam from June 18th to 25th, 2025. And darn the icebergs because we'll be heading north to Alaska from Vancouver. We'll bear witness to Alaska's pristine bays, dramatic glaciers and classic gold rush towns. It'll be a seven day voyage to remember and I just can't wait to go. Oh, and we'll be joined by rebel stars like Sheila Gunn Reed, Alexa Lavoie, Drea Humphrey, and the skipper himself, Ezra Levent, as well as Canada's bravest freedom fighter, that would be Tamara Leach. And get a load of this, there's even gonna be a special mystery guest on board. We have four different cabins from a very economical inside stateroom to the luxurious Neptune suite there's something for every budget. You can see all the details at rebelnewscruise.com and you can book your ticket there too. In addition to the regular fun of a cruise, we're organizing special rebel only events, including private receptions, speaker panels, film screenings, dinner together every night and more. The core of the Rebel News Cruise will be the in-depth panel discussions with our guest speakers covering the hot topics of the day where you can have your say in the conversation. In your free time, you can do everything else you'd imagine doing on a luxury cruise ship, enjoying the scenery and going on excursions. So what do you think? Will you join me? For more information, please visit rebelnewscruise.com. But hey, sign up soon. Our last Rebel News Cruise sold out and there are limited cabins available. You do not want to miss this. P.S. The best part of the Rebel News Cruise, in my humble opinion, is getting to know dozens of other rebels from across the world. In fact, every night we'll rotate which dinner table you're at so you'll have a chance to meet 
all of our different rebel celebrities. Plus, when we're in port, you'll have the day to yourselves so you can unwind and just relax. Click here for more information and book now. And never forget the saying, folks, you just can't lose when you do the cruise.